Welcome to Souls and Plays, where this week I weather this vendetta to within an inch of its life. So to prepare my trusty flyer for weathering, I've base coated everything, used the airbrush, given some nice gradients, it looks good, it's ready to go, now let's ruin it. First thing you're going to do is grab a bit of sponge and rip a nice chunk off. This is a rather large vehicle so I'm using a rather large chunk, but if you're using something like power armour, get a smaller chunk of sponge. Then get some tweezers and put it in between, I'm using this nice butterfly clip just to make sure that it stays put and doesn't make me stress my fingers. The first thing we want to do is do the lighter chips because then we can put our darker chips inside to show those layers of paint. So I'm using some Fimrizian grey on top of my Thunderhawk blue base coat. I'm dabbing the sponge into the paint directly and then wiping off most of the excess with some nice dabs on some tissue paper. Once I'm content there's just enough paint so it doesn't splodge, I'm going to gently dab it all over key areas on the model. That's edges, sharp corners, anywhere there could be some wear and tear. Now this is an aircraft so a lot of the forward wings and forward surfaces are going to get hit by debris. So I'm going to use that as my main area for testing out if I actually like the scheme. Now this is quite a quick process but you do need to be careful, take your time and make sure there's not too much paint. You'll need to constantly add more paint to the sponge if you're doing this correctly. If you're not needing to do it very often, you're probably going to be making a lot of splodges so just take your time, be patient and it should end up looking something like this after you've just done the lighter chips. I dare say this already looks good enough in some situations so you could if you really wanted to stop here but what we're going to do next is add some layers. The way I intend to add the first of these layers is with some Rhinoxide, which is a dark brown paint from Citadel. I'm going to use the exact same method, but I'm going to target this where I put those lighter flecks. Specifically where those bigger splodges were, so it can look like that there's a layer inside of that where the paint has gone through to sort of darker metal or the primer. A lot of large vehicles are primed in a darker paint beforehand, so just use whatever paint you fancy. Black brown works too. Next I'm going to grab my metallics and do exact same thing, focusing this further inside those darker chips. It doesn't matter if you go a little bit outside the lines here like I did on that first splodge because it still looks decent. And here's the vehicle with all the chipping complete. Nice and quick, this probably only took about an hour. Next up we're going to add some streaks. I'm going to use a contrast paint here, Skeleton Horde. These streaks represent where oil, fumes, things that can liquidize on the aircraft have, have done so and with the speed of the aircraft been dragged backwards. So I'm going to add this in some key areas all over the wings. Don't go too far otherwise you'll cover up a lot of your work but you can go pretty intense with this. So I do this in a few colors and as I move along as well as doing the very careful brush strokes like you've seen there I do some scratches along the wings and that makes it look like it's been flying quite fast. Next up I'm going to do the exact same thing with some Basilicanum Grey. After that some Reichen Flesh Sade. Now that's all complete you can see where most of the streaking has gone on, it's giving it a nice three tone effect. With that chipping we're adding a lot of depth to this aircraft. Up next, the engines. First thing I'm going to do is cover all the metallics with Nuln Oil which should look something like this. Then I'm going to grab my next layer of paint which is Seraphim Sepia which is the first layer of our muzzle burn. Here's what it looks like with Seraphim Sepia. Moving on swiftly, we're going to grab some Agrax Earthshade to intensify that muzzle burn effect. That's where the heat has struck these engines and warped the colour of the metal. What I'm doing here is adding it in a few key areas to add some grime along the engines too, because these are massive metal monsters. Next part is some Druki Violet just to add that heat bloom. I apply this fairly liberally towards the end of the engines.
And then in the interest of variation, I also add a bit further up the engines just to make it more visually appealing. The penultimate step in the heat bloom is to use some blue wash here. I've used some Drakenhof Nightshade just to really sell that effect. This is quite a cartoony effect now, but I love it. The next step is to add some black to add some of that soot and burn at the end. I've added this on the armor panels here where the engines have been firing at the back and then also across the back of the engines just to give it that nice sooty effect. And in all honesty, after that, bearing in mind the vehicle was pre-base coated, that's it complete. The chips act as highlights and it ends up looking something like this. Here it is next to an older aircraft I did with some lighter weathering. I quite like the new effects, I haven't decided which one I really want to go for for everything but they work well together, bearing in mind one is a fighter and one is a combat lifter. So that'll do it for this video. People have been asking for some chipping and weathering tutorials for a little while now. So there you go. If you have any other things you'd like me to make, drop it in the comments and I'll give it a go. Thanks for watching. I've been Sam. See you next time.